We are a trading nation. We need to move goods, services and people into, across and out of our nation at the fastest, safest and most economical route and mode of transport. Our national network of road, rail, air and seaports and waterways need significant expansion and improvement. We need to ensure that we have better planned and structured transportation requirements bringing together cross-state, state and intercity transport links whilst linking air and seaports better to road and rail. We need to ensure approval processes and clearances are better meeting the environmental needs and are balanced with our future capacity requirements. We must have professional project management from planning through to implementation and maintenance. The vast majority of our infrastructure projects are delayed, they're behind schedule, over budget and with poor outcomes from their original objectives in terms of the speed and the volume of people and goods that are able to be moved. Delhi Metro is the only major example to date of a large, highly visible infrastructure project that has met expectations. We need many more of these. We've added significant generation capacity to feed our growing energy needs. However, this is still insufficient and we need to add an equivalent of the whole of the European community to meet our needs for 2050. We need to rethink how we generate and supply energy. How can we move faster from fossil fuels to renewable energy, solar, wind, tidal, geothermal, and we now need to seriously reconsider nuclear energy. We need to consider localised energy generation models, the reduction of energy wastage, improving plant utilisation and performance, and increase revenue and investment back into the industry. In terms of measures, very simply too, our capacity to generate energy and our demand per citizen, and the cost per gigawatt of energy that we are generating. Our land mass has generally remained the same. Our population, use of water and land under agriculture has significantly increased. However, our agricultural productivity and fresh water availability has continued to decline. It is a stark reality that we will not be able to provide sufficient fresh water nor feed our projected population growth. Future conflicts may not be over oil and energy, they may be over fresh water and food. Firstly, we need to retain as much monsoon rainfall as possible. We need to replenish our water tables and provide for increased national usage. Secondly, we urgently need to build waterways and canals to provide for and share water across our nation. We need to price water realistically and separately for industrial, commercial, agricultural and residential users. We need to increase water recycling and reduce wastage. We need to reduce fresh water use through mandating industrial and residential recycling and to reduce the wastage through pollution and contamination. As one of the largest nations and populations of the world, we must be a leader in water management, water treatment, water saving tools, technologies and techniques. Fresh water availability per citizen, the volume of water we're recycling and reusing, the volume of wastewater that we're actually treating and finally the length of our waterways for transport, energy and other benefits. At our core we are still an agrarian society. We have one of the largest areas of land under cultivation and are one of the largest producers. However, we are hostage to seasonal rainfall, poor supply chains, coupled with declining agricultural productivity and are aiming to economically feed a much faster and larger growth in population. We must increase the productivity and absolute outputs from each acre of our agricultural land. We must not increase the amount of land under agriculture. We need an evergreen agricultural revolution where our crop selection 
Productivity and production cycles are aligned to the soil and weather conditions. We need to provide more agricultural education and training, more a more professional approach to farming and agriculture, and finally to reduce waste, food waste. We must simplify and reduce the number of participants in our supply chain, from packaging to handling and transfers. Simplifying it from the farm through to the consumer and the kitchen. Four measures, yield per acre, average size of farm holding, area under cultivation and percentage of or weight of the waste produced. As our industrial, economic and population growth continues, we've had the consequent impact on our fragile environment. We've seen our soil, water and air contaminated with pollution from industry, human effluent and waste. This impacts not only our citizens but also our visitors to the nation and all of our flora and fauna. We need to maintain at least a third of our landmass under forestation dense forestation as per our 1952 national forest policy. We need to cordon off larger tracts of protected wildlife zones along migratory routes that are secured and protected by military trained staff. We have only one environment and land to live in. We need to clearly share this and leave it in a better condition for our future generations. Four measures, the square kilometre of protected area, the number of endangered and key species that we have, the number of tourists that we get, and the environmental related criminal cases and convictions that are brought to our courts.